Hello my friend. I have a video here for you to uh, help you out with coding in some knockback for your player. Um, I've uh, been playing with this a while and I'm using this, uh, this little project of mine that I started as, as my uh, testing ground for this. Uh, I've been playing around with learning one bit pixel art and so I created this little mock-up of a two-player fighting game the spy versus spy kind of um, theme here uh, right now it's just basic player movement just walking jumping crouching um, with a little bit of a slowdown and he can jump down through the thing and as you can see I have him being knocked back a little bit by the bullet if I go upstairs here he gets hit by the bomb Boom, he gets knocked up in the air and falls and then gets back up. Um, if I get hit on that side, he goes the other way. So I have the direction setting up depending on which side of the bomb he gets hit by. So let's take a quick look at the code and I'll try to show you how I set this up. Uh, it's a little bit of a wonky system because I don't understand how to do some of the more advanced features of the engine. So I'm just using the tools that I understand and putting them together in ways that will make this work. So, uh, it bombs pretty basic. It's a kinematic 2D so I can get it to do its arcing motion in the air. Um, the bullet is just uh, an area 2D all by itself because it just has real basic mechanics. just fires to the left. But the bomb uh, was a little more complicated movement wise so kinematic body worked a little better. I have two area 2Ds on this, uh, one area 2D that's on the one side of the bomb, and then this one that's on the other side. Um, I just, I was having a hard time getting the bomb to tell the character which direction to go in, depending on what side he got hit by. With just the one area 2D, I, I couldn't access the variable for some reason. So I just went ahead and created this one that will have the name boombox 3 and then this one that has the area the uh, name boombox 2 so when the character when the player when his hurt box uh, interacts with the area 2d on the bomb it's going and as long as the character isn't blocking which I don't have blocking set up right now but uh, it's going to tell, it's going to change a variable that the uh, player has up here called knockback direction to either 1 or negative 1, which we're going to plug into his uh, motion.x to tell him which way to fly, uh, left or right as he goes. It's also going to knock him straight up in the air. So he's going to knock him upward into the air, and uh, my code, my physics code up here is going to tell it which way left or right to go and how far, how fast. Uh, we're going to set two variables to true, a hit state and then freeze controls variable. Basically I consider this like a two-tiered hit state system. Whenever hit state is false, then my basic physics process stuff will work, will run. You know, my, my X input, uh, whether I'm pressing left or right on the controller, um, you know, then using that to tell him how, how to move, how to stop, and here's his movement speed, how I make him accelerate and hit a top speed, and I kind of clamp that top speed, and then have him slow down gradually when you stop pressing the button, and then set gravity and set move and slide to make everything work right. But all of this only functions if hit state is false. So when down here he touches either side of the bomb, we're going to turn hit state to true. And so when hit state is true, so let's see where are we again. Here's the physics process right here. When hit state is true, none of this is going to work anymore. None of this. Okay, this is all my jump and, and moving kind of code and crouching and all that. Instead, now that hit state is true, 
these lines of code are going to run instead. Um, and freeze controls get set to true whenever you touch the bomb. Uh, freeze controls 2 gets set to true when you touch the bullet. Because um, I do slightly different uh, knockback controls for that. And basically, so when you touch the bomb, it's going to set your horizontal motion to a different set of variables for movement. Uh, it's going to set it to knockback, but we're going to multiply that times the knockback direction, one or negative one, depending on which side of the bomb you touched. Uh, it's actually similar variables to my movement speed. Here I have for just walking left and right, acceleration, and then the maximum speed. So he accelerates up to 100, but at an acceleration rate of 500. Well, same thing. Uh, knockback will be, you know, how fast he kind of accelerates to this maximum knockback speed. So we basically swap out uh, these values for these values. Okay. Uh, so you get you get touched by the bullet by the bomb, I should say, and we now set this horizontal motion in place. And we because I treat this block of code like its own physics process, even though you can only have one physics process in your code at a time, I have to re, uh, reapply the gravity and the movement slide down here as well. So he gets knocked up into the air by the bomb, and then once he touches the floor, if he touches the floor and hit state is true, and freeze controls is true because it was the bomb he touched, not the bullet, once he touches the ground, we're going to restore hit state back to false. But it doesn't fully unlock all of this stuff up here because you notice within this code, I still did some freeze controls. That's why I have like a second tier of suspending the controls and the motions um, so that some things work, but not, you know, and some things don't until a timer is going to restore everything entirely. So basically, once he hits the floor after getting knocked up in the air, we're going to return hit state to false. But freeze state will still be true, but we are going to launch this function called get up. And all get up does is it just checks to see did he get hit by the bomb or did he get hit by the bullet. If he gets hit by the bomb, we're going to set the timer, this get up timer, to 1. Or if he gets hit by the bullet, we'll set it to a shorter time, like 0.2. And we're going to start the timer. And now once this get up timer times out, it's going to return both the, the freeze controls 1 and 2 for the bomb for the bullet back to false, which then fully unlocks all of my basic mechanics again until I get hit again. So that's, in a nutshell, basically how it works. Um, I can do a more detailed video to explain all of my mechanics, if you would like. Um, but I, I tried that earlier, and it was a super long video, and I forgot to turn my microphone on, so I talked for like an hour for like absolutely no reason. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but if you want that, let me know down in the comments or reach out to me on Facebook. If you have any questions about any of this, how this works, uh, I'd be happy to explain it in more detail. Uh, hopefully you can see my code pretty well here. Um, I'll just I'll just flash through it real quick just so you can see everything again. My basic physics for my bomb. My variables in my physics. Um, Q for you when screen exited. And then when it touches the player's hurt box area 2D, how it instances the explosion scene and then positions it, and then cue freeze after that all happens. Same thing for this bullet. Uh, here are the variables. Here's its basic function, uh, physics process, I should say. Um, I just set a, a generic direction to it, since this is just a test bullet, not fired by the player. Cue freeze on screen exited. If it hits, I just call barrier for, like, if you hit, like, a tile or something, and just creates a little explosion and then kills itself. And then when it touches the player's hurt box, it instances a little explosion scene. Um, and then uh, 
sets its position and kills itself. Okay, up here for the player, here are the basic variables for movement. Oops, <laughs> for movement. Basic variables for knockback. Okay, this friction is what I use for that linear interpretation to make him slow down. There's my gravity, my jump force. Vector two, direction, and then the knockback direction. So when you're in the hit state, you use these. When you're not in the hit state, when hit state is false, we use regular direction for all of our other normal stuff. Uh, action booleans to help manage my animations and things. Uh, this is for like health gauges and whatnot. Setting my position 2Ds, the spawn points basically for any bullets or bombs I would sh throw or shoot. Um, okay handling animations in my process function instead of my physics process function. And then here's all of my basic physics when hit state is false. Hit state is false and I'm on the floor, how all that works. Okay, and then when hit state is true, here are the physics process process processes. I can't talk today that work only when hit state is true and then when you hit the floor after getting knocked up in the air notice when you hit the when the bullet hits you you're already on the floor so this if is on floor will fire right away after it sets the motion for that notice half of the knockbacks uh, force than it was for the bomb because it's just you're just getting shot by a bullet not getting blown up into the air and then we return it to false. We launch the get up function. So here's that get up function. And then the get up timer when it times out. It t returns everything to false. Okay, I hope this wasn't too confusing for you. Uh, let me know what you think. And happy coding.